Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. It's 837 on the morning majority, and we have Larry Kudlow with us. He's the host of the Kudlow Report on CNBC and the Larry Kudlow Kudlow Show on WML Saturdays at 7 p.m. How's it going, Larry? Morning, Mary Catherine. How are you? I'm pretty good. Tell me why I'm now worrying about Italy. <laughs> well, you probably yearn for the old country. I do. I, I do. Actually, that's what it has a lot to do with mozzarella. The food is good. The living is easy, and the bond rating is deteriorating. <laughs> yeah, and they can't have it all. You can't have everything in life, and the bond yield is exploding. And um, this is kind of a sad tale in a way because. What I gather from the markets, from traders and investors I, I talk to, is the general view is that Berlusconi must leave. He's been there too long. And in order to solve their budget problems and continue the downsizing of the uh, Italian and, and entitlement welfare state, it's time for Berlusconi to go, and, and people want that. I just want to say one word in defense of Berlusconi. He's basically been running that place for 17 years. And Italy has had multiple, I mean, they usually average two or three prime ministers a year before yeah. that. And so he added a lot of stability to that country and, you know, made it to a large extent into a, a serious economic, a serious European economy. So I'm not going to trash Berlusconi. I don't have enough political wisdom to know whether it's true or not that he must go. But I do know this. The marketplace uh, does want his head, and they want to avoid the obvious, and that would be, any kind of default on Italian uh, debt that would affect the Italian banks, which in turn would cause a massive contagion effect throughout Europe and the rest of the world economy. I mean, that's the basic story here. It's like the Greek story. And in fact, the bond vigilantes have moved from Greece to Italy. Well, I, you know, I look at what's going on in Greece right now, and it, it seems like some days we think it's fixed. And some days we fe- we feel like it's not being fixed. It is, it is, and it is, it is. And we vacillate back and forth. How long is that going to go on, and how will we really know if the situation is fixed on a permanent basis? Well, you know, you, I, I've told you in the past this story goes back to 450 B.C., <laughs> and there's no reason to think it's going to get solved anytime right. soon here in the 21st century. Uh, Greece is going to get uh, some kind of unity government, and then they're going to hold snap elections. And... At the risk of being totally wrong, which one can easily be in this uh, story, it does appear to me that Greece will accept the rescue conditions of the European Union, uh, the IMF, and the ECB, the so-called Troika. And so in the short run, I just want to emphasize this, in the short run, on paper, Greece will take some steps. They will get their bailout money. Their bonds will get a 50% haircut for the banks that own them, and I think that's a good thing, by the way. That's kind of a structured default. Longer term, can you bet on Greece? I wouldn't say so. All right, Larry, we've been batting around the Herman Cain saga for quite some time, getting hot and heavy this morning. Uh, We're inside the Beltway. You're outside, although in New York City. What do you think of this uh, up there from your perspective? Well, look, I mean, as someone who is generally an admirer of Herman Cain and a lot of his um, free market economic views, I was disturbed by the allegations. I'm glad to see he's going to hold a press conference today to deal with them. I think that's very important. In fact, uh, you know, on our show, we led with this last night, and a lot of people, including Mona Charon, said he's got to come up with a um, large narrative to cover these allegations. In fact, all of these allegations, particularly the one yesterday, and I would say one thing that interests me, uh, maybe because I'm partly a financial guy, um, the whole business of the suite at the Capitol Hilton uh, Hotel, uh, aren't there credit card records available to see whether that's true or not? Yep. And so, therefore, if it turns out not to be true, then I think hmm. that really damages um, uh, uh, the story, Bialek's story, Bialek's story, whatever her name right. is, and helps Herman Cain. If it turns out to be true, then I think we are all owed an explanation. Other than that, it's very hard to know who's telling the truth in this. I mean, that's just the long and short of it. But it is disturbing. There's no question about it. Yeah, I, I don't. I guess. I guess it would be even if there is a receipt. Does that necessarily prove anything? I mean, it just it goes back and forth and back and forth. I don't know if we'll ever find the answer to it. Well, now. presumably it would be with a credit card that belonged to the National Restaurant right. Association, yeah. and they would have the records. And whether or not they are willing to come right. forward with those records is an open question. That's one way to look at it. That's not the only way to look at it. Um, 
I, I read, I did not see Herman's appearance on Jimmy Kimmel last night, mm-hmm. uh, but I read about it. Um, he made a strong defense. His wife is out there making a strong defense. I might want to see more of his wife. I think that if she mm-hmm. stood up for him, um, that might help his case quite a bit. Um, I prefer to believe that Herman's not uh, did not do these things. That's just my personal preference. On the other hand, reporters are reporters. There's a lot of good reporters in Washington D.C. They get tips, they get sources. I'm not prepared to say that everything just because there's a quote unquote liberal reporter. I don't even know what that means anymore. That everything is wrong. I'd like to hear a complete narrative from Herman Cain to put this to rest. That would be the optimal situation from my standpoint. All right, Larry. Good to talk to you. As always, appreciate it. We'll be watching tonight.